Okay, so here we are at our riparian corridor woodland. Uh, so what you can see behind me is the creek. And it's along these creeks that uh, hikers in Southern California, the Southwest, and anywhere else that is more arid and semi-arid, look up and kind of realize, oh wow, I'm hiking through full-size trees. I feel like I'm back in the Northeast or in the Midwest or the Southeast uh, because they see full-size trees. They might think that their trees were planted there. They might think that someone's coming to water them. Well, no. Even though the, this area is getting the same amount of moisture, same amount of, of rain as you find over in the coastal sage scrub, this is the key as to why you have these full-size trees behind me. Uh, so these are probably about you know, the equivalent of maybe about closer to a two-story uh, house. Uh, these trees uh, include sycamore, uh, and you can always remember sycamore because uh, it's like the tree that makes you want to throw up. Sycamore, get it? Uh, and that's the one that has like a, it typically has very uh, patchy white bark, uh, very wide palmate leaves. If I find a leaf, I'll show you it. Uh, but the gray ones behind me are alders, white alders to be specific. These are, uh, yeah, so basically they have deep roots uh, and they can only grow in places where the water table is high, such as near a stream. Even when the stream basically dries up to barely a trickle, it can still nonetheless, uh, the, the, there's still groundwater close enough to the surface to sustain this, uh, uh, this more moisture needing community. Now it's still pretty early in the season. Uh, if we were to come back here a month uh, later in March, uh, this will be fully green, uh, fully leaved out, but it does actually get cool enough here in Southern California in the winter time at night that it does make trees, deciduous trees, lose their leaves for the fall, okay, and grow them back in the spring. Another key uh, thing is that you'll notice that you have certain plants like this mule fat here. I'll uh, show you this mule fat. So this mule fat, that's what it's called, it's kind of a funny sounding name, uh, but it's very bendable. You can see that it's uh, very limber, uh, you can bend it, okay. Uh, it made it very useful uh, when back in the, um, when the Native Americans that were here, uh, you would use them to build their uh, 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 homes and so forth, uh, but it's adapted to flash floods, okay. Uh, when the water is very powerful and just comes through, plants need to be able to spring back up uh, after the rush of that uh, kind of um, uh, flash flood. Okay? So, uh, yeah, here is an example of a small sycamore leaf uh, in the fall. So, yeah, it's kind of, uh, uh, it almost looks vaguely like a maple, but it's not, not at all related to maples. Uh, they have very spiky uh, seed pod balls. Uh, and uh, and we're kind of at the points uh, where we're actually getting a little bit more into the mountains, the canyons. Up there, the white alder is, uh, actually there is some uh, leaves popping out I'll show you here in a moment. Here you can see a sycamore leaf. Uh, is coming up and there's plenty more so I, I, I didn't hurt it but yeah it typically has the white uh, bark you typically see sycamores a little lower in elevation so a little further down this way toward uh, the flatlands toward the basin and in the mountain canyons you have more of the white alders but you also actually have a native maple uh, the big leaf maple okay so uh, uh, so go and explore uh, your riparian areas any canyon bottom uh, in the long, that's uh, where hiking trails go through are going to have plants and trees like this.